Okay, let's do some circle geometry. So this video is an introduction to circle geometry. Before you look at the other video, I want you to remember these five things that you must be thinking about before you attempt a circle geometry question. Five things. One, watch it first, do it last. What does that mean? Okay, if you are a really good student, do what you want in the exam. Start from the end if you want. Start from the first. You will just rip up the maths exam. For the, but for the normal folks, pro tip, when you get the exam, come May the night, so whenever it is for you, turn to the end of the paper, watch the three last questions, especially the second to last question. That question is going to have the circle geometry. Take a look at it, and you want your brain to cook on that while you say the universe of the paper. So watch it first, but then come and do it last. Listen, that method really works. It sets your subconscious mind on the question already, and you begin to cook it up while you say doing the rest of the exam. So take a look at the question first, but do it last. Next thing, don't use a protractor in this question. So if you whip out your protractor and you think you're going to measure them angles, eh, you're going down the wrong road already because it's not drawn to scale the diagrams are not drawn to scale so you can't use a projector if you use a projector you'll get the wrong answer they specifically mess up the way they draw that diagram so you won't get the correct thing and also they expect you to use your rules so don't use a projector number three there's no major trigonometry in this so don't expect to whip out your sine rule and cosine rule so you can put back your sine rule and your cosine rule in your pocket don't be worried about Pythagoras theorem or the trigonometric ratio Soka Toa. What they want to, what they are testing you on is if you can identify the rules for circle geometry and figure out some angles here. Not really tricks. That's the next part of the question. So number four, we're getting into the good stuff. You need to know the basic geometry rules, and we're gonna talk about that. Number five, you need to know the advanced geometry rules. So let's go into the basic and advanced. The basics. You must know the basic stuff like angle in a straight line is 180, all the angles in a triangle are up to 20. If you don't know that, come off of this video right now. Number two in the basics, you need to know how to identify angles. This is the um, notation that we use. A, B, C with a little hat on the B. That means angle at B, right? So, that's the angle at B there. Notice the little hat on the B there. All right, I don't think I need to explain this. Oh, some people was worried about this. That means angle, eh? That is not the less than sign or greater than sign or whatever. That means angle. Um, so, number three in the basics, you need to know the types of triangles and their properties. Isosceles triangle, equilateral. This is the basics. I'm just making sure that you know this, but I expect most of the students out there watching to know that. If you don't know that, as I say again, you need to go back and watch some SEA videos, man. So, number four, quadrilaterals and their properties. Quadrilaterals and their properties, you need to know that, especially the one where they say all the angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. All right, so number five, we're getting into the good stuff. Chords, you need to understand what a chord is. A chord is a line. Hey, let me get a line here. A chord is a line joining two points on the circumference of a circle. Let's draw a chord. One point, thing. That chord looking kind of skinny, but let me get a bigger one. Okay. Let's do like about that size, maybe about seven pixels, six. Seven. Okay. There you go. That's a chord. And a chord divides a circle into two segments major segment and a minor segment. So you have the major segment there and you have the minor segment there. Okay, let's draw another chord. Okay, that, chord, that one missed. That's the next chord there. That's the next chord there. That's the next chord there. All right, enough of that. Here's something to note about chords. You see, if you have a chord and you start from the center of the circle and you go towards the chord and you hit it in the middle, all of a sudden, this angle here, 90 degrees. First rule, take that down. Continuing with the basics, number six, the final thing in the basics that you need to know is what is a tangent. So if there's a point out here and I draw a line and it just skims past the circle like that, pew! without going in the circle I find mine kind of going in the circle alright so if you have a point a line and it just comes past the circle like that and it doesn't go inside the circle it touches the circle it remains on the side of the circle that's that my friend is a tangent if you have two points if you have two lines coming out of the point it will form at the circle like that 
two lines and if I take this little line here and I join up that like that so I join the exact point of contact for the tangent okay that was kind of bad I join the exact points of contact for the tangent this creates an isosceles triangle so it means that this angle here and that this angle here are equal right because they are isosceles triangle that is kind of useful in the exam remember that so once again a tangent is a line just touching the circumference without entering it this, all right so time to go into these circle theorems these are this is the advanced stuff the circle theorems right so at the end of this video i'll just provide you one picture that you could screenshot and print out and stick on your bedroom and put as the background on your phone and um send to your friends send to your enemies put it on your desktop wallpaper put it on your laptop wallpaper put it in your study cards so the circle theorems let's begin with the first one the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees how do we get a semicircle if we divide the circle by a diameter so that's going through the center there let's pretend the center is about there so so it goes straight through the center mm. it goes straight through the center so if i was to make an angle like this it's going to be 90 degrees anyway i attempt to make this that okay that's a real awful one anyway i attempt to make two straight lines from that chord you know the diameter is the longest chord right um this angle here is always going to be 90 degrees angles in a semicircle is 90 degrees bap bap 90 degrees okay let's look at the next one that one is simple and straightforward the next one angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center this is the one that is most this guys in the exam i'll show you how did this guy is it just now but okay you see this this came out of a chord right i'm showing you the whole thing first this came out of a chord this chord hey 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 this was born these two angles were born out of a common chord right there so what we are saying is out of this chord was born two angles one meter the center here and one meter the circumference there what we are saying is the angle that is at the center is always going to be twice the angle that's at the circumference simple as that now let me show you how they can disguise this stuff um do, 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 do. right suppose i drew a next angle like this it can be harder to see this rule applying in that condition but it is it still applies this angle here will still be twice this angle there so this is how it's normally this guys in the paper all right let's move on next rule angles in the same segment form a common chord and I let's explain that concept so if we have a chord here and I create two lines off of that chord to create an angle and I create an next angle somewhere here we are seeing that those angles are equal no matter where I made it if I made one if I created one here instead it's still going to be equal all those angles are going to be equal I normally call this the bunny ears. Some people are trained to look for a Z pattern. Some people are trained to look for a bunny ears pattern. Whatever it helps you remember it. That's good for you. So if that angle is 31, that's 31 degrees as well. All right, let's hustle along. Number four is about cyclic quadrilaterals. Cyclic quadrilaterals are quadrilaterals that are trapped inside a circle. So you need to know this for CXC as well. But here's what you need to know. You need to know that this angle and this angle, which are opposite, will always add up to 180 degrees. The opposite angle in a cyclic quadrilateral always adds up to 180 degrees. Can you see the same thing happening in the green? All right. The angles between a radius and a tangent is 90 degrees. We're wrapping up here. Radius and a tangent. So we discussed this a little bit before. If I have a tangent and I run a radius from the center to the tangent, that will be 90 degrees. That's kind of like the definition of a tangent and a normal. The radius here is acting as a normal. So people with physics and admat will understand this perfectly, right? Um, this tangent here will always, no matter where I put the tangent actually, if I run a radius there, it's going to meet it at 90 degrees. And finally, alternate segment theorem. This is like probably the most important theorem of all of them in terms of um, it can help you see a tough part in the question. It's probably one of the hardest ones to see. But, you know, alternate segment theorem, it just sounds so, mm, so good. That has to be a really deep rule, and it really is. This is the one that most of the times in hard questions unlocks the final 
level final stage all right let's see how it works pause that right there so if i have uh let's go back so you can see how this playback if i have a tangent and i create a chord from the tangent notice i could have created the chord anywhere a chord from the tangent that's but the chord is the red line there i create a chord from this tangent this angle that is that is made there that is created between the tangent and the chord is always going to be equal to the angle in the opposite or the alternate angle in the triangle that we could create from this chord so if i create a triangle from that chord these two angles here are equal incidentally there's a next one that could be two angles that could be equal right here this angle is between the tangent here and the chord here so the opposite angle in this should be up here so whatever this angle was this angle should be equal to that as well obviously it wouldn't be six right so it was 60 degrees if that's 60 degrees that angle up there is 60 degrees as well so this is probably the most overlooked one most important one for you to remember here's a complete list of all the circles there screenshot this and stick it up everywhere if you want a better looking picture you can head to my facebook page i'll, po I'll post a picture there so you can just download that and feel good so look out for the next video on circle theorems i'm going to do questions from cxc fast paper solutions and i'll do as much as i can fit into 10 minutes to just get your so that you can get a good understanding of how to solve the question